Hi there. I don't know under which rock you live, but Miss Coffee Bean's rock was hit by this tweet from Jan Lecon announcing a new paper by Randall Balestriero, Jerome Pesenti and himself explaining why deep learning systems are actually extrapolating and not interpolating like many other deep learning scientists are saying. We assume that this paper comes as a consequence of the Twitter fight that was going on previously where Lecon was claiming that deep learning systems are extrapolating, but other well-known researchers like Gary Marcus were explaining why this is not the case. At that time I did not know what to think about all this. And now, after reading the paper, I still can't. Miss Coffee Bean here has an opinion, but will she tell it? So in this video we will explain the story behind this question of interpolation versus extrapolation in machine learning, what the original arguments were, what the paper explains and what people are responding to it. First, two warnings. In this video we will show a lot of screenshots of text, feel free to pause and read, but we will summarize everything. As for the second warning, the tone of this paper has quite a dose of vanity. In some passages it seems like the authors are explaining to us, kindergarten children, how the world works and that really deep learning models are extrapolating while so many of us were making the silly mistake of thinking otherwise, which might be the case, I don't know, but ignoring the tone, the paper is written well, explains things didactically and has the nice property of answering in exactly the next sentence the questions I have been asking myself while reading it. But let's forget about the paper for a bit and focus on the origins of the whole discussion. Jan Lecon reacted with a tweet to Steven Pinker who was praising a blog post explanation of why neural networks are glorified curve-fitting algorithms and that they only interpolate and therefore do not generalize. And if we look into the blog post, this is pretty much what the post says. It reminds us that the universal approximation theorem states that a neural network with one hidden layer can approximate any continuous function under some assumptions. So this means that the neural network takes a super complicated function between input and output but breaks it down into little pieces. So this is glorified curve fitting right here, but only in the data range that the model has seen already. The post gives the example of the Taylor series, which approximates a sine wave of let's say the temperature of a day when we do weather forecasting. There the first polynomials of the Taylor series model the range of the data really well but goes bananas outside of that range. And a neural network might do the same because if there are no points outside of this range during training, the loss will be zero when approximating the training points perfectly and the fitted curve models them perfectly. So the blog post highlights that deep learning does glorified curve fitting. But Jan Lecon disagrees. He says that in high dimensions, everything is extrapolation, not interpolation. Gary Marcus goes on to challenge Lecon and brings examples as I have seen in my research too, that if one takes a neural network and teaches it even numbers, the network cannot make sense of odd numbers that would be in this case extrapolation because odd numbers were not in the training set. So you imagine how happy I was seeing that Jan Lecon explains his viewpoint in this new paper here. And here with the definition of interpolation is where it all starts. The authors define that interpolation for a sample occurs when the sample belongs to the convex hull of the existing set of the examples. The convex hull is the smallest convex polygon enclosing the points such that any line you draw from one border to another stays inside the hull. So if we were to take these blue points as training set, draw the convex hull around it, we would ask the interpolation versus extrapolation question for a test point in the following way. Hey, do you test point fall into the convex hull of the training set? If yes, the model is interpolating. If you're outside, then the model is extrapolating. And what about the alternative definitions of interpolation? Like the interpolative regime when the loss of the training data is zero, which the blog post was talking about. I don't know, they just discard this definition and go on about the paper. Even though it seems like this definition of interpolation was relevant for the blog post. Anyway, let's stick with the definition of the authors for the moment. 
They go on and reiterate theoretical results and additionally show empirically that the probability for a new point to fall into the convex hull of the already sampled points quickly approaches zero when the dimensionality of the space grows bigger. And this makes sense, this is clear from the curse of dimensionality. Because the space between stuff grows exponentially as the number of dimensions increases. But what about the intrinsic dimension of the data? The manifold hypothesis tells us that even if the encoding of the data is d-dimensional, the intrinsic dimension, that is the smallest dimension to which we can reduce to without losing information, can be much smaller than d. Well, the authors account for this by testing on natural data that should lie on a lower dimensional manifold and by data where the intrinsic dimensionality was artificially decreased. The message, even though the data manifold is really low dimensional, the experiments show that the data points do not fall into the convex hull of the training data points, meaning that the model extrapolates during testing. The authors then conclude that extrapolation that does not guarantee generalization, because they have shown that what they see here is technically extrapolation, but they acknowledge that neural models are still very limited and lack generalization. Therefore, extrapolative capabilities do not amount to generalization capabilities. Okay, so this was the paper. Now, what to think about it? Was everyone, including me and Miss Coffee Bean here, that were using the word interpolation wrong the whole time? Well, let's go back to the definition where the authors motivate it by reminding us that it is used in other sciences in the same way. But nonetheless, I do not think that this is what people mean by interpolation when referring to neural models. You know, I have zero money in this game. I am 100% willing to accept any definition of this word and go on with it. But let's look at what François Cholet tweeted in response to Jan Lecun. Certainly, in response to the arrogant tone of the paper, he also responds in a very bold fashion, calling their definition of interpolation a common beginner mistake. Because François Chalet goes on to explain that the paper uses interpolation in the sense of linear interpolation, where all new points can be sampled only from straight lines in Euclidean space. But the manifold the data lives on is curved, and models do not learn linear interpolation, but a manifold interpolation. And by looking at this here, we can see how the new point definitely falls off the convex hull of those two points, but is still a manifold interpolation between the two. So, Miss Coffee Bean, you're telling me that all this time renowned scientists were tweet shouting at each other because they were using the same word but with different meanings? The blog post seems to have meant the interpolative regime when the loss is zero. The paper of Lecon defines interpolation through the convex hull. François Cholet goes for manifold interpolation. At least, this is what we understood from these discussions. We would also like to add this beautiful point made in a Reddit discussion. That we never expected models to interpolate in the sense that things fall into the same convex hull of the training data. Let's suppose a case of linear classification where we want to separate between two linearly separable classes. Well, we would still successfully classify a point outside the convex hull if it stays on the right side of the decision boundary. This is just a thought for discriminative models because as far as I understand it, Francois Cholet focuses more on the generative case in his response. Honestly, I am excited to see how this argument continues. What do you think about all this? I hope that Jan Lecon will come on the Machine Learning Street Talk podcast to tell us more about the topic. That was it for this video. See you next time.